Hey everybody, Austin here again, continuing my How I Make My Videos series. And uh, today on part four, uh, basically what we're gonna be doing is talking about OBS and how to stream and how to work with OBS. Um, streaming to the internet via services like Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, and things like that, um, you, there's a variety of different pieces of software you can use to do that. Um, OBS is free and it's a great piece of software. You can also use it for local recording. Uh, I talked about OBS in a previous episode here where I don't even use my capture card software directly anymore. I basically use OBS and let it handle the recordings. Uh, so you can also use it as a desktop recorder. You can, you can capture your gameplay footage with it and let it handle the, you know, the file creation process and you can use it to live stream to the internet. So what we're going to do here in this episode, I'm going to kind of show you how to poke around OBS. This is going to be a little more tutorial-esque, but it'll give you an idea of what I have to do behind the scenes to make my streams happen. Now, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with my YouTube streams. I do it at least once a week here. Um, and you're familiar with my templates and, and things like that. And I'll show you how I sort of get to that point where it's what you see on your television or your screen or your computer monitor. Um, and this should also help you out if you're interested in trying to get into streaming yourself or if you even just want to do local recordings, but you want to try to bring in a couple devices, like say you want to bring in your game capture and you want to bring in your webcam and things like that. And you want to bring in your microphone, yada, yada, yada. And I will show you how to do that. Uh, so we're going to talk about OBS. So I'm going to show you how to, you know, bring devices in. I'm going to show you how to sort of configure scenes so you can have, say, live chat integration, webcam integration. Uh, integration. Um, you know, you can, you can. I'll show you how to crop and and transform objects in OBS so you can basically get it to how you want if you're uh, if you're feeling creative. So, or if you're feeling really basic, OBS can be about as basic as you want as well. So, uh, it's a very powerful software and it's free. So, that's why we're gonna be focusing on it right now. There are some other paid applications you can get. I don't really recommend them to be honest with you. Uh, OBS is just rock solid. So basically what we have here, we have a blank template. Um, so OBS, I should probably talk about this bottom area first. So. On the left-hand side here, you have what are called scenes. And I'm gonna go ahead and just bounce around. So I have one scene here just for local recording. So here's my PlayStation 4 hooked into my capture card. So this is currently um, what I do for local recordings. But then I have my YouTube templates. Um, unfortunately, because of you know how I have various window captures and things like that going on, this is gonna look completely different than it's supposed to. But I have various templates. If I have, you know, if I'm changing games, I have this. I have different slides for, say, the Patreon backers and things like that. Um, and so these are basically scenes. This is how you switch between different scenes you have set up. Sources right next to it, this is a very important one. And um, let's go ahead and go back to our tutorial one. So sources are very important. So these are things like your webcam, your microphone. Um, you know, anything that you can bring in, any images, uh, you know, any devices, uh, anything that can be seen or heard um, on the stream is added here in the sources field. So um, I'll talk about uh, I'll talk about and add some sources in a little bit. But first, uh, let's move over to the mixer part. So over here you have uh, volume control. Um, so. Uh, this one right here is desktop audio, and we don't actually have anything going on on the desktop, but if you were playing music from your, your computer or you're watching a video or something like that, uh, or playing video back, uh, you would see this, um, you know, this populate. Um, you'd see the volume levels from your desktop. Over to the right, you have scene transitions. Um, so this is how you trans, uh, you know, transition from, from scene to scene. So right now you'll notice that um, I'm basically just cutting instantly. It's just an instant cut. It's nothing crazy. So for that, what I like to do is I actually prefer to do a fade and I like kind of like long, smooth fades. So I usually have it at, a, at about 1300 milliseconds. So now since I've set that, um, it should fade over as as we go from scene to scene, kind of like that. So when you guys see me start my streams on YouTube, you'll notice I fade in and that's because I have the fade transition uh, enabled. I believe you can actually get other types of transitions uh, as plugins, but uh, I just have the stock default OBS transitions. Um, so I like fading and so that's what we do there. So all the way over to the right, 
I basically have um, different controls here. So you have start streaming. This will allow you to start streaming out to the internet. Um, start recording. This starts a local recording. Studio mode. And studio mode is actually really interesting because when you're in studio mode, you can actually make, you can view and make changes to different templates um, without uh, actually affecting the current template that the audience is watching. So um, this black uh, this black space over here is the current template. There's nothing. So if I was streaming, they would just be seeing black. But with in, with studio mode, I can go and I can edit um, other templates on the fly um, and then come out of studio mode just like that without actually uh, changing the scene. So if I need to make some quick edits or there's something I forgot to do or there's something I forgot to enable, um, I can go fix it behind the scenes without making a big deal about it. Otherwise, I'm sitting here trying to tweak the stream live um, and the audience is seeing me tweak it. And a lot of times, you know, it, it depends on the level of professionalism you're trying to have when you stream. Um, on Twitch, a lot of times I just don't even really care. But on YouTube, I do use the studio mode. So sometimes I actually do make changes behind the scenes live on the spot and you guys don't even know it because I'm using the studio mode. Um, and then lastly here, you have settings. Well, not really lastly, because you also have exit, but you don't actually need to click that if you want to exit. You can just click the, the red X in the top right if you're using Windows. Um, but settings are very important as well. So this is your basic settings screen in OBS. Um, so you have general settings here. I don't usually bother with too much. You have a light and a dark theme um, and so forth. And oh, over on the left here, you've got general stream output, audio, video, hotkeys, and advance. Um, the last couple I don't mess with very much, same with audio, um, but stream is very, very important. So if you're streaming out to Twitch, um, you can select the Twitch service here um, and you can select your Twitch server. So these are all the Twitch servers that you can connect to. And you really, you can have it set to automatic, but what I like to do is try to connect to the server that's the closest to me. Um, and for me, it's Ashburn, Virginia. That's actually about you know, 15 minutes down the street from me. So I connect to the Ashburn server. It's probably located in you know <laughs> one of Amazon's server farms in Ashburn. They have a, a bunch of servers in Ashburn, Virginia. Um, and then lastly, you, you'll need the stream key. This is basically a password um, that uh, Twitch or YouTube sets for you and you can change your stream key if you if if it's been leaked somewhere or someone stole it you can go to your twitch profile and change it and they'll just randomly generate a new key for you but this is mandatory if you plan on streaming it's not necessary if you're trying to do local recordings you can just ignore the stream tab if you're just doing local recordings but if you are streaming this is very important and what's interesting is the youtube and youtube gaming um option here um, I actually haven't gotten this to work. So for YouTube, I do a custom streaming server. Um, and on YouTube, uh, the information for this will be on your live stream dashboard. And so let's actually pull up the live stream dashboard. So I'll be going to my YouTube channel here. So let's go ahead and just do that. And we're just waiting for my internet. And for YouTube, you want to click on the live streaming tab here on the left. Now, this is all probably going to change because uh, YouTube Studio is going to be rolling out sometime in the near future. And so some of this, uh, you know, functionality is going to change. But for right now, you just click on the live streaming tab and it'll take you to your live streaming profile. I am very satisfied, YouTube. Thanks. Thanks for your feedback. So uh, if you want to get your stream key for YouTube, uh, you basically come down here and you would take this server right here. You would copy it, go back to OBS, paste it just like that. And we would go back to our, our YouTube and I would copy this. And actually it's not going to, and I'm not going to reveal it right now because you guys will see my stream key. Um, but you would basically take that, copy it, paste it here and just click apply like so. And that'll give you your, um, your connection to YouTube's uh, service. So let's go ahead and set this back up and I'll have to reconfigure my stream key. Uh, so next is output and output is very important as well. So when you're streaming, uh, you have video bit rates. Um, this is basically the, the overall quality of the video and how much data transfer is required um, to, to get that video quality. So I usually do around 4,500 uh, KB, KBPS, KBPS. Um, and 
Um, this is um, not the highest, but I mean, for for people with poor internet, this would probably be too much. Um, and especially people doing retro games. If you're doing retro games, you don't need the, the bit rate quite as high. Um, but if the bit rate is lower uh, with really fast moving games, uh, first person shooters, classic games like Doom, for instance, um, you'll get a lot of uh, artifacting. You'll get uh, sort of like a... Uh, just a, a messy image with the lower bit rate. So I actually have pretty solid internet here. I pay for the best package and uh, technically I could actually go higher. I could go to 6,000 if I wanted to and my internet will still be just fine. When you have your bit rate set really high, um, it actually makes the stream a little more demanding on your, your end viewers. So that's something else to keep in mind. Um, I, get a lot, I get a lot of viewers from you know other countries, you know South America in particular, and their internet's not great. I even have Australians as well and their internet's not always great uh, depending on where they are in, in their countries. Um, so by having a higher bit rate like this, um, it's it's harder for them to view at the, the max quality settings. So uh, that is also something to keep in mind. If you're doing really old school stuff, you can actually get by with, you know, 2,500 or maybe even 2,000 here. Um, if you got the internet though, I would personally go with at least 3,000 if you can, because for me, the, the sharper the video quality um, you know, the happier I am with, with my, my product, basically. Um, you know, it is kind of like a product. I kind of look at it as that, like, I want to, um, I just want everything to look nice and sharp and crisp. And especially for people watching down the road, you know, if I have archives and I've got, you know, I'm using a 2000 bit rate and I'm playing doom, it's going to look all blurry. It's going to look, um, it's going to be look jumbly. It's going to be a lot of artifacts and things like that. It's not going to look crisp and clean. And, um, I'm, I'm going to be dating the stream very, very quickly that way. Um, and actually I probably won't even be happy with the look. I just won't even show it to people. So so I do relatively high bit rates here. 4,500 usually looks pretty nice, um, but I could go higher. Um, so audio bit rate, um, this actually is interesting because certain, um, certain streaming platforms actually don't allow you to go higher than 160. So even if you have say 192 selected uh, or higher, uh, it's actually not going to go through. The, uh, the, the stream service is basically going to force uh, an audio bit rate of 160 or lower. So I like crisp audio as well. And so while 192 and up is probably unnecessary, um, I do like it. So, you know, I, I go ahead and just do 192. I could do 320 if I wanted to, but it's probably overkill for streaming. Um, but I definitely don't go down to 160 or 128 and definitely not 96 or 64. That just sounds terrible. Um, and I don't really recommend 128 either personally, just because, um, you just don't get as, as crisp and clean of audio with 128. So if you've got the, the, the horsepower and you can do better audio settings, go for it. And that's something else to consider with OBS and streaming in general is that this does require a, you know, a good system to have a nice, say, HD 60 frames a second stream. Uh, you do want some good hardware when you're streaming. So if you've got the good hardware and your, your system can handle it, crank the settings up, you know, give yourself some, some, some great quality, you know, in both you know, video and audio. So next we have the encoder. So I actually use software encoding. Um, you can actually use your GPU to encode. Um, so I actually have an AMD based graphics card. It's a Radeon RX 580 at the current moment. And um, so I could actually offload the encoding to the graphics card. I actually don't do that because I have a pretty powerful system. Again, I'm on a AMD Ryzen 7 1700X CPU and it's an eight core 16 thread processor. And uh, OBS I think is great with multitasking. It'll take advantage of your extra cores uh, and, and so forth. So um, uh, I can do software and have it look a little bit, uh, a little more crisp. A lot of times the, um, the GPU encoders sometimes don't look quite as crisp as the software encoders. So uh, I usually just stick with software. Um, also, sometimes I might be playing games on my PC that use the GPU and I don't want my GPU um, um, basically trying to bounce back and forth between, you know, streaming and, uh, and playing the game on my PC. So that's another reason why, I, uh, why I'll stick with software. So next you've got, uh, your local recording folder and, um, 
So you can basically select a folder here that that you know tells you you know tells OBS where to put its files, um, and then you also have uh, recording quality, recording format, encoder as well. Encoder down here is basically the same as the encoder up top. Uh, so again, I do software encoding. Uh, recording quality, um, I usually recommend doing indistinct, indistinguishable quality, large file size. If you do lossless quality, tremendously large file size, it is extremely, extremely large files. And um, I think it's kind of unnecessary um, for what I'm doing. I, th I don't think it's really necessary for what I'm doing uh, when I do local recordings. Uh, so I usually do this one. Not usually, I always do this one. Uh, recording format, I like MP4 because it usually plays nice with different uh, video editing suites. Um, something to keep in mind with MP4 though is um, if something happens during the you know the recording, um, say you lose power or or um, you know the program crashes unexpectedly, your file will be corrupt. It'll be lost. So you have to have a nice clean recording from start to finish without any interruptions for MP4 to work. But I'm gonna end up redoing the video anyway, say a let's play if something fails. So it's pretty much all or nothing for me anyway um, with my, my workflow and my work process. So uh, I always just do MP4 as a result. And again, it plays nice with other video editing suites. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. And then you also have over here on the far left, you've got audio. Um, I always do 44.1 kilohertz for um, my sample rate. I don't mess with any of this stuff down here, but there's a, a lot of different options you can get into here. Um, video. So this right here is really important. So you've got your canvas size, um, which is basically, it's the resolution of, of your, um, you know, your canvas. So, and this, the output scaled resolution, this is the actual resolution that your viewers are seeing. So, you know, you can have a 1080p, um, or 1920 by 1080 canvas, and then you can actually sort of force that out as uh, you know, a smaller resolution if you absolutely have to. The higher the resolution here, the greater the horsepower that's required uh, in order to stream. Likewise with the downscale filter. So you have three different settings here. You've got bilinear, which is fastest but blurry if scaling, bicubic, which is sharpened scaling, 16 samples, and then you've got lansos, which is sharpened scaling, 32 samples. So if you've got the horsepower, you wanna do lansos here. You wanna do this one, it is so much sharper than uh, either of the other two. But if you have a really old system and you're you're having trouble getting a good consistent frame rate, then bilinear is what you want to do. And if you're doing retro games, um, this doesn't matter quite as much. Um, but if you're starting to play uh, more modern games or first person shooters, you need these to be as best as, as absolutely possible. So if you can handle Lanzos, absolutely do it. Uh, likewise, your frame rate here. So these are different frame rates you can apply to your stream. Um, if you have a weak system, I'd suggest doing 30 frames a second for gameplay. If you're like me and you've got a really powerful system, 60 all the way, always do 60 frames a second. Sometimes what I'll do is if I'm playing a game that I know is 30 frames a second, I'll actually lower the stream down to 30. Um, and also if I'm Playing something like, say, Doom, classic Doom, which actually doesn't run at 60 frames a second. It runs at some odd, uh, unconventional frame rate, like 35 or 37 or something like that. So in cases like that, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually lower it down to 48. That's less frames that OBS has to process. Um, so you can actually get yourself a uh, slightly better uh, visual quality or scene quality by lowering the frame rate. Um, but for me, I, I do 60 FPS games for the most part. Um, and so I always stream at 60 frames a second. If you don't stream at 60 frames a second and you're playing games that are 60 frames a second, which is most retro games run at 60 frames a second, uh, whether you knew it or not. And um, if you stream at 30, um, say if you get hit in Contra or Mega Man, your character will start turning invisible on the stream because only half the frames are going through. Um, so you definitely want to be streaming at 60 FPS if your computer can handle it. Again, if your computer can't handle it, you've got other settings here and that's what these are for. So the nice thing about OBS is it's quite flexible and uh, you've, you've got, uh, you know, even, you can stream even on weak hardware um, with OBS, but just be warned that 
the video quality is not going to be that great if you're streaming on weak hardware. So if you're streaming, I highly recommend a, a beefy computer. If you're doing local recording, uh, it's not quite as important, but you still want a somewhat beefy computer for local recording as well. Um, so yeah, that's that. So what we're going to do is just back out of that. Uh, so let's go ahead and start messing with our sources. So let's go ahead and create a template here. So what I'm going to do here is right click. I'm going to go to add. And what I'm going to do is basically do a image. So this is going to be our um, tutorial background. And I can just go to browse. And let's go to my YouTube folder. I have a specific folder for this project. And I have a couple of things I, I just threw together real quick. So let's go ahead and open up our background here. So this is gonna be our background for this project. I figured I'd go with something, normally I go with like really dark colors. I like gray and black and things like that. Stuff that's just kind of soulless in a way. Um, but I figured, you know, some cloudy blue uh, will make for a nice happy tutorial. So this is gonna be our base background. Um, so if I wanted to, I could go to add and I can go to text GDI plus, or I can do deprecated text free type two. There's two different types of text you can do. And I could say, let's name this. Hi, welcome to my OBS tutorial. And uh, you can select your font here. Uh, you can select, uh, select your size and color and things like that. You can add a, um, a shadow if you want. And you can even add a background. Let's go ahead and add a back background. Let's, we will make the background black. And we'll raise the background opacity. And we can lower the opacity. So the, we've got some flexibility here. So, And let's go ahead and raise the font as well. And we can click on select font right here. And we're going to go ahead and just leave it on Arial. Actually, what I like to do is... Uh, actually, it doesn't even really matter. But let's raise the font. We'll make it 72. When I when I do text, uh, what I like to do is do large text if I can, and um, and then if I want the text smaller, I actually I shrink it down, um, kind of like what I do in Photoshop usually. So, so and we can just move that over there. So now that we've got a basic uh, element here, you can actually click it. You'll notice that. Um, it's got a red border. So this is actually really, really important. Say you wanted to crop this. Say uh, uh, say you wanted to just edit this out and just sort of crop it a little bit. You can actually do that by holding down the Alt key and grabbing uh, one of the four main sides. And what you'll notice is that when you start cropping, the borders will turn green. This lets you know that the the item is cropped. Um, also, when you're moving things around, um, you'll notice that they actually sort of snap to uh, to edges and so forth. So to avoid snapping, you can actually hold down the control key. So you'll notice that it's not snapping anymore. Now, if I let go of control, there we go. You can just kind of see it click into place. It's just snapping into place. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just get rid of this crop. So I'm gonna just hold Alt and then stretch it all back out. Just like that, and just like that, and then just like that, and just like that. So that's actually how you crop in OBS. And that's actually a very, very important uh, function in this. Okay, so you know you can add text um, down here in the sources area. Um, one thing you can do, if you wanna delete it, but still have it there just in case you want it back, you can click the, the, the little eyeball um, icon. So if you click that, it goes away, but it's still here. If I deleted it by clicking the minus arrow at the bottom, um, it would be gone. And if I wanted to bring it back, unless I had used it in another scene, I'd have to reconfigure it from the ground up. So a lot of times what I do, if I want to delete things, I'll just mute them just like that. Also, say you want to lock it into place. So you'll notice that when you click on various items in OBS, uh, they will highlight with the red border, letting you know that they're selected and you can move them around freely. Sometimes though, you end up selecting the wrong thing. Um, and you end up moving it by accident. And one of my complaints with OBS, and maybe this is just me not knowing how to do it, maybe the function is there, but I haven't found an undo function. So if I move something, I can't just control Z 
and have it move back. Um, so what I do to avoid that is I lock the items in place by clicking the little lock button here. So now when I try to click on this, it's only going to select the background because I have locked this high. Welcome to my OBS tutorial uh, text. I can also lock the background. So now if I click on anything, I can't move anything. I'm trying to drag them. It's not letting me. So what I'd like to do is set things in place. So my backgrounds, I always have locked. Otherwise, I accidentally click on them when I'm trying to access text or things like that. Um, um, and I end up moving the backgrounds and I have to reconfigure the backgrounds and it's just a major pain. So get your backgrounds in place, click the lock button, and then they can't be moved again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just mute the tutorial text as well. So the next thing what I, I wanna do is I wanna integrate my gameplay. So let's go ahead and click the plus key down here. And for gameplay, you would do a video capture device. And so we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And I actually already have an existing one. It's my Elgato Game Capture HD60 Pro, which I've talked about on previous episodes. So we're gonna go ahead and just add that. And there's my gameplay. But hey, where did my background go? Um, and what is the point of having a background? Do, you, do I even want a background? Well, it, for me, yes, I want a background because I'm setting up a stream for people to watch. And it's not just all about the gameplay. I want, you know, I want a background. I want to have space to put text to invite people to the stream. I want to have a webcam integrated. I want to have chat integrated and things like that. So for the capture card, if you want to scale it down as usual, just click on it and then drag it. Something also I forgot to mention is you can actually transform things and stretch them out. So if I really wanted to, if I had some images, I can hold down the shift key and it'll basically let me scale it any way I want. I can even reverse it uh, if I really wanted to. Now, if you want to uh, take your scaling here and switch it back to normal, all you have to do is just click the edge, drag it normally, and it'll automatically scale it back to the default. So if you accidentally transform it and it looks ugly and you want to try to get it back to the, the original you know, scale, that's how you do it. So you can hold shift to transform and then just move it normally without holding shift and it'll go back to its regular aspect ratio. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Usually what I do is I like to do my gameplay on the right hand side, it's just out of habit. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the gameplay on the left hand side. We're gonna have some left hand side gameplay. Um, yeah, so we'll bring the gameplay over here. We'll make it, yeah, probably about this size. Um, um, so there we go. Um, and we can also shrink this down a little bit so you can, you can actually see the template a little bit larger. Okay, so we've got our gameplay. Now what do we want? Well, I don't know, how about a webcam? You guys wanna see my ugly face? So for that, you would also do, um, you would do video capture device if you wanna add a webcam. And again, I already have a webcam on here and we just click add. Whoa, who's that guy? Now you'll notice that um, if if there's movement when you're using the webcam, you'll notice that it tries to autofocus, and this is a major pet peeve of mine. Turn autofocus off, and you always have to check this. So, but before we do that, let's go ahead and scale this down. So here we go. We've got our webcam here, and let's say I want to put the webcam maybe in the top right-hand portion of the screen. And don't mind me, I'm a little rugged today. I just woke up a little while ago. Um, so there we go, there's our webcam. Um, and what I'm gonna do is actually move the gameplay over just a little bit as well, try to space it out a little bit. For gameplay and stuff like that, I try not to put it at the very edge of the screen. And the reason for that is that if people are watching on a television, there's sort of like an overscan on the borders. Um, and so I don't want things like the gameplay to get cut off. So I always leave things just slightly away from the edges of the screen. Now, if you're watching on a, you know, a smartphone or tablet, it doesn't matter. You don't really get the overscan effect there. But if you're like my television does have the overscan. If I'm using the YouTube application, it gets cut way off. So I'm thinking about people like myself, you know, watching from the YouTube app. And so, but there's our webcam up there. So now if you look back down below, I've got a webcam right here. So what I wanna do is actually go right click it and go to properties. 
So if we go to properties, we have a couple of different settings here. So you have frame rate settings, you have resolution settings. Um, you'll notice that I've got the webcam set at 1920 by 1080. It's the highest this webcam supports. Um, this webcam does not support 60 frames a second though. Um, so it does support 30. Um, so I just leave it at 30 frames a second. Some people will do 24 because it's, you know, you know that's what you usually get for film and whatnot. But uh, I just do it at 30 frames a second. I think on stream it's better. I think, I think you want more of a, a fluid, um, you know, webcam um, feed for streams, personally speaking. If you got different video formats, I usually just leave these, you know, normally. Uh, you've also got buffering. Um, which you might have to enable or disable depending on what's happening. Um, for a, you know, for weaker computers, you do not want to do 1920 by 1080. And what I could do is you'll notice that the webcam up here is really small. Because it's really small, I don't really need it to be that big. So say if I, I can do 960 by 720. That's actually looks like a four by three aspect ratio. So, um, so what I used to do is like 800 by 448. It's also a widescreen format. Um, and so there we go. For little small webcam boxes like that, you really don't need to be running it at a really high resolution. You're just burning up, um, you know, CPU horsepower basically for nothing because, I mean, look, it's tiny. So, but for me, what I like to do is I also like to switch over to uh, full screen webcam setup. So this is where. 800 by 443 is going to look really blurry here. So let's go ahead and shrink it back down. And what I'm going to do is change the webcam back to 1080p or night. I always say 1080p because that's the hip thing to say, but it's really it's 1920 by 1080 in this case. So there we go. 1920 by 1080. Now when we uh, expand it, you'll notice that, Hey, looks a little bit sharper now. So, but let's go back to our tutorial scene. And now our webcam is back to 1080p. And so I always run my webcam at 1080p if my system can handle it, um, because when I want to go full screen with the webcam and talk to people uh, face to face, have a heart to heart or whatever, it's already set. Um, so it's already going to be 1080p across the board. So also something I wanted to note is if you bring a webcam in to your sources here and you've got it in other scenes, it's it's the same it's the same configuration. So when I go to this webcam right here is the exact same configuration. So if I configure the webcam from this page right here, it'll affect the webcam settings on this scene right here. So, okay. But also what I wanted to do is go to properties again, and this is really important. So I have a Logitech webcam, it's a C920, and you wanna do configure video. And when you're using a C920, you want to be using Logitech's Pro Webcam software. OBS will will uh, find it, and whenever you go to properties or video settings, it'll bring up the Logitech webcam software. So this little fancy box right here, autofocus, turn that off, leave it off. This is a huge pet peeve of mine when I watch people stream, and I see professional streamers not turn this off. And I find it very, very difficult to enjoy their streams because every five seconds, the camera's doing an autofocus thing, turn it off. And one of the issues with these though, um, is that um, it seems I have to turn it off every time I stream. So it's something you have to, you have to get into a mindset of telling yourself, every time you start, you have to turn off autofocus. Uh, if autofocus is on, it's gonna be constantly popping in and out over the course of the stream. It's very hard on people's eyes and um, people don't realize that. Streamers oftentimes don't realize that. So turn that off. You'll notice if you watch me on Twitch, it's always off. You never have to see the autofocus pop in. Um, but let's go back to configure video again. So right here, um, and let's actually move this over a little bit. So right here, if you go to advanced settings, if you're using a, a you know Logitech webcam, um, you've got different lighting uh, functions here. So right light and putting it on auto will actually um, automatically you know raise the exposure and gain and things like that. I turn that off because you notice how look at how the frame rate just took a major major hit. That that oh, the room's nice and bright. That's great, but. God, look at that. That's horrible, man. So I absolutely, I absolutely hate that. So what I do is I leave right light off and I leave uh, gain and exposure um, set to manual as well. So you'll notice that the higher the exposure is, that's 
where the frame rate takes a hit. These are not super powerful, you know, webcams. They're not high end. Um, so I usually turn the exposure down if I really wanted to. I could leave it nice and dark like that, but you do want it somewhat bright. So, but I like to try to, uh, you know, straddle that that line where it's it's you can see the room and the frame rate doesn't take a hit. So look at this, the frame rate, the frame rate's about as good as it's gonna get on this webcam. So, but if I put it up any higher, you can see uh, there's a little bit of a blur effect there, even more of a blur effect, even more. You can see how the frame rate is just, it takes a dip the higher the exposure goes. So um, I usually stream at night as well. I don't have any lights on right now. I'm just using natural light from my, my light or my, <laughs> my window. But I usually have lamps on and things like that. So if I have a webcam, usually they're illuminating me well enough to where I can keep the exposure down, keep the frame rate high on the webcam. Um, white balance down here, you can actually, I just leave that on auto. Um, because a lot of times the, I fire the webcam, and it's more like this. But if I put it on auto, it'll it'll detect it automatically and look look more natural. Uh, you also have brightness and contrast and things like that. But I don't use the webcam software to do that. Um, some people kind of go crazy if they want to hide themselves and, uh, they just do things like this. So this is, some people actually like to do this. Um, I should probably actually do it because there are a lot of weird people on the internet. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go ahead and just put that back to about default and whatnot. Color and intensity is basically saturation. So you'll notice that I've just desaturated it completely. It's black and white. Um, so let's go ahead and bring that up to normal. And we'll go ahead and just save it. You've got device info as well. Nothing special here. So, but yeah, that's configuring your webcam. And, uh, you know, we've got it here in the top right. So the next thing we want to do is, you know, we, we might want to get some branding on here or something like that. So I actually have my gameplay and talk uh, logo here. So we're going to just type tutorial logo. And we're just gonna bring in an image, which is my gameplay and talk logo, just like that. Unfortunately, this image is really old. It actually stemmed from an old website, personal website project I was working on back in 2003 or 2004 or so. And um, so I'm still using some of the same assets from back then. And as such, it is, um, you know, very low quality. It's only 250 pixels and that's actually larger than it should be. It looks really bad even at 250. So, but as a small little, you know, thumbnail here or, you know, branding piece, uh, it looks fine. So you can see once it's scaled down, it's nice and sharp. Um, and so, you know, I can use that here just for consistent branding. Um, I like to put branding on my videos too, because if someone steals my videos, I know it's mine. So a lot of people don't put branding in their video. They, YouTube has this little overlay that'll pop up in the bottom right hand portion of your video or your stream. Um, but I actually embed my, my icon in all my videos. And if I'm streaming on YouTube, uh, I've got the gameplay and talk name in the top right as well. So, but yeah, that's my, my little bit of branding right there. Um, so now let's get some, some chat integration going here. So one of the things, um, here is that um, you have a couple different things you can do here. So when you stream on YouTube or Twitch or Mixer or places like that, they have chat interactions. So the fun part about streaming is that you stream out to the internet, people come into the chat and they talk to you. And then you guys have a hopefully a healthy conversation, assuming you're not getting trolled or something like that. Um, and uh, so you have a couple different choices of what you can do with that. Um, I like to embed my chat into my stream because um, for one, it's kind of a habit uh, from the earlier days of my streaming uh, where nowadays um, when your streams are archived, they also archive the chat conversation. So when you watch it, it'll actually play back the chat on the side of the video. Twitch does it, YouTube does it. I'm not sure about Mixer, um, but um, so, uh, you know, people can just reread the chat that way. But the problem there is that what if they're watching the video full screen? Well, they can't see the chat. And that's why I embed chat into my stream. So when people are watching full screen, either on their phones or tablets or their televisions or computer monitors, they can see the conversation uh, without having to, 
you know, make the screen size smaller, get out of the full screen video to look at the chat manually. So I like having my chat integrated into my stream. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to my YouTube gaming page. And uh, let's see. So here's my YouTube gaming page. And so what I like to do in, is I take the chat here and I go to pop out chat. And the reason I'm going to my YouTube gaming page is if I'm streaming on YouTube, uh, I actually really like um, the YouTube gaming chat. You have dark mode by default. It, um, it scales a little bit nicer for chat integration or stream integration and things like that. So what I'll do is I'll go to pop out chat and I'll switch it over to live chat so all messages are visible. And this is a personal thing, but what I do is I just stretch it up like this so it just goes all the way to the top of the screen. And then I will actually close this out. And now what I'll do is I will do what's called a window capture. So this is how I do it. This isn't the only way you have to do it. So there are a couple different ways you can do it. You can do a browser source and just post the uh, the chat link there and it should populate within OBS. But I like having full control over the window. Um, so I do uh, a window capture. So I basically just bring the chat up in the web browser and then I do window capture. So let's do tutorial chat. And there we go. It actually it was the first thing that popped up. So with window capture, you can you can do a couple of different things here. So here's actually Streamlabs OBS. I'm using Streamlabs OBS to do the local recording for this project. So I actually have two instances of OBS up. I recommend regular OBS. Streamlabs OBS for me has been um, very very buggy and very unstable. So, um, but that's how you can do that. Here's my Ableton Live, which is how I'm grabbing my video. So this is just a window capture. It'll, and here's another one where um, I sort of have a basic list of things to do. So you can see how the window capture function is, is really handy. It can capture any window on your desktop. Uh, sometimes you also have to use it for certain PC games. Sometimes the game capture or desktop capture won't work for certain PC games. So you can try the window capture and play them in windowed mode. Um, so let's go ahead and just take the chat. And here's our chat. But you know, something's not right here. You know, you see, you see the the URL, you see the live chat, you see where I can type in things, and you know, before we actually you know mess with this, let's go ahead and type in some stuff. So I actually have custom emotes if you become a sponsor on my live stream here on YouTube. So, and we're gonna change some of these up. Um, let's just try to get some stuff in here. So there's my cat Patchouli. She was actually featured on episode three. Well, there's some Castlevania holy water, and and so what I'm going to do is is a test. This is a test, and again, hello, testing. So sometimes what I do to get this stuff configured is I just type a bunch of stuff in here, just to make sure it wraps around correctly. just like so, and we'll get the GG in there just for good measure. Okay, so this is the window capture. You'll notice that you see the scroll bar, um, you see all the stuff below it, so we don't we don't want any of that. So what we wanna do is we, we wanna go ahead and crop it, just like I cropped the text earlier. So we just hold down the Alt key, drag this in, and then we'll drag this in from the right, just past the scroll bar, just like that, and we'll drag this in on the bottom, just like so. And you know, we'll probably make this a little bit thinner too. So let's go ahead and just crop this in. Uh, what's nice about YouTube gaming as well is you can also take out the the thumbnails or, or the user icons. I like leaving the user icons in. I kind of wish Twitch had user icons like this because um, you know, it's easier to identify people based on the image um, if you're playing a game. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll shrink this in on the right as well. So there we go, we have chat. So let's bring it over here. I, a lot of times I like to put my chat below the webcam and we'll just kind of shrink it in like this and get it somewhat uniform.
And that looks that looks fairly uniform. So there we go. So we've got chat integration. But you know, that chat, it's gray. You know, do I do I really want that chat to be like that? Um, well, here's where filters come into play. So we've got our, our uh, chat integration. So let's go to filters. So we right click, go to filters. And what I want to do is add a color key. So color keying is basically what people use when they say record videos uh, on a green screen. They use a color key and they pick the screen color, which is green by default because so many people use green screens um, and it'll remove all green in the image. So for me, what I want to do is do custom color because there's no green here. Um, and we're going to go to select color and then we're going to do pick screen color and then we're going to pick the, the background from the chat. And there we go. And voila, look at that. Our chat is now free of all the gray. So now you can also configure this a little bit. You can change the similarity. So it, it basically, you know, we'll try to take more of similar colors out, which you don't really want to do that. So what I like to do is just do it a little bit. And then you've got smoothness as well, which can smooth out, you know, um, you know, some artifacts and things like that. So I leave these up just a little bit and you can even change the opacity as well if you really wanted to. So, which will change basically the, the effect of, of the, um, the color key. Uh, you also have things like, you know, brightness and contrast you can adjust, but really it's just about removing that color. Um, so there we go. We have absolutely no border now on the chat. So let's go ahead and just look at that. So you can actually overlay this on pretty much whatever you want. Some people will just do it like this. This is actually how I used to do it on Twitch, where I'll just have some of the chat up top like this. And it looks like I need to crop this up just a little bit more, just like that. Um, or some people will just have it on the bottom or something like that. If I wanted to, I could I could crop it like so and then have it on top of the gameplay. Um, there's a whole lot of different ways you can do this. Um, but for me, what I'm going to do is just bring it all the way back up. And we're going to go ahead and just leave it over here like this. So. And since we're not actually using, um, you know, the, the gray background anymore, we can uh, we can also stretch this out a little bit more so the text is a little bit larger so and there we go so you know we've got a basic stream template right now and you know nothing too crazy so what i would do is you know i would potentially have like um you know different labels up here or something like that so let's go ahead you know and and bring our text back actually and you'll notice that you know i brought the text back but where is it i see it hanging off to the edge here well in the sources area um the 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 items at the top they're actually physically layered on top so my tutorial chat is actually the top one i can use these arrows on the bottom to move them around so there's the chat it's on the bottom it's it's the chats below the tutorial background so you can't even see the chat the background's blocking it so i need to bring the chat up one just like that um, same with the text. So I need to bring the text up. So what I typically do is I leave my capture card down at the bottom, right just above the background layer. Um, things like webcams and, and things like that doesn't really matter, but let's go ahead and lock the gameplay into place as well. And we're going to lock the webcam into place too. So it doesn't move any, anywhere. Um, the logo in the bottom, right? We can go ahead and leave that there. And, um, And, you know, chat will just leave there as well. And now we can move the text around freely. So, and there we go. So welcome to my OBS tutorial. So this isn't really anything crazy. So what I, a lot of times what I like to do is I like to spice things up a little bit um, in, and add little borders to things. You'll notice that I have borders on my YouTube. Um, uh, um, oh, I should say I have borders on my, my Twitch scenes. Um, so let's go tutorial border one. And so I actually have a, a gray border I made. It's 1080 or it's 1920 by 1080. And it's just a small gray border. Um, and there we go. 
And so what I like to do is I like to take little borders like these and then wrap them around, um, you know, items in my scene. So we're going to actually wrap it around the gameplay here. And when you have an item selected in OBS, you can actually um, uh, use the arrow keys to shift it pixel by pixel. And so what I'll do here is I'll actually just kind of shrink this in a little bit just to have it really wrap the gameplay perfectly. So you don't, the gameplay actually doesn't go out, out of it at all. And if you want to deselect something, you just click out. So just like that. So look, we've got a border around the gameplay now. So what I'm going to also do is um, let's go ahead and actually move this gameplay over just a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on um, both the border and the gameplay. Uh, actually, no, we're just going to move the border first. We're going to move it over a little bit like that. And then we're going to take the Elgato and click on that and then move that over as well, just like that. I'm having to squint. Okay, so yeah, we've got gameplay with a border. So I think that looks a little bit better. Uh, it gives a, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little, a little more dimension to it. It's, it's not just flat in it, in, you know, you know, just clean edges. You've got a border. You've got something that kind of makes it pop out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is add a border to the other things too. You know, the webcam and the chat. So let's go ahead and add another border. And you've, you can do whatever you know, naming convention you want so you don't get, you know, lost. And let's go ahead and bring the border down like this. And we've got it up here at the webcam. And there we go. So unfortunately, um, with the borders that I have, they're actually, uh, it's just a couple pixels, that's it. So when I stretch them out, they, they look large here around the gameplay, but around the webcam, it's not really that much. And I can't really even see it all that well without squinting. Um, And there we go. So we have a slight border around the webcam and let's add a third one for the one on chat. And so we basically just use shift. This is where the shift transform comes into play. So what I also like to do is usually have things like my borders kind of uniform. So I want this border to be, you know, roughly matched up with the border on the webcam. And, you know, I'm actually really curious here. Let's see. So, um, scale filtering, transform. So one thing you can, you can do actually, and this is actually a really good, uh, idea. If you want to match the, uh, size, so what I'm going to do is go to this border, go to right click, transform, copy, transform. And now I'm going to click on the chat border. So right click transform, paste transform. So it actually puts this, um, this border right on top of the other one, unfortunately, but it also makes it so my border is the identical width as the webcam border. So that actually makes, uh, you know, lining this up a little, a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and there we go. We've got that. So now I can go ahead and just stretch it down without having to worry about the left and right width. Okay. So there's that. And um, so let's go ahead and shrink the chat as well. So we've got our border in place and there's the chat. We have to unlock the chat. So let's go ahead and bring the chat in a little bit. So this makes the text a little bit smaller, but 
you know, it is what it is. So, and actually what I probably want to do is go ahead and, um, no, let's go ahead and bring the chat up like this. And then we'll take our, our border again and we'll just shrink it in like that. So there we go. I mean, it's not a crazy border, but it adds a little bit of, you know, a little bit of extra detail, which is, which is kind of nice. With OBS, you can get as, you know, as lazy or as complicated as you want. Um, and uh, so there we go. I mean, that's 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 basically it. I'm trying to think of some other things I can do here. Um, let's talk about alert boxes and things like that. I know you guys are really curious about that. So, um, oh man, let's see. Mm, how do I want to do this? Okay, so I'm going to go to Streamlabs, uh, not my YouTube Streamlabs, but the Streamlabs for Twitch. So let's go to Streamlabs. And we're going to go ahead and log in with Twitch. And there we go. So these uh, Streamlabs is actually a really great um, site that you can use uh, that will... You know, once you connect your, your YouTube or Twitch account, it will, you know, show who's followed you and things like that. On Twitch, you can host other channels. Um, so it'll show who has, um, you know, has who has hosted you, who's donated and, and things like that. But they have a whole bunch of different little things you can do. So the big one is the alert box. So what I'm going to do is actually take this and um, we're going to copy the URL. And what I'm going to do is go back to OBS and I'm going to add a browser source or just a browser. So you use the browser source for uh, your alert boxes and things like that. Um, so this is the tutorial alert box. And you can see how this basically just comes up with a basic web page and whatnot. And we're just going to post our link. I'm going to actually have to blur out that, that link. So, but, uh, and you can change the width and things like that. So, you know, it's something like 800 by 600 is usually fine. But if you want to, you can do, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just do like 720p. And if my computer can handle it, which again, this one can, I do 60 frames a second. And you also want it to refresh the browser scene when it becomes active. Um, Sometimes these can time out and they stop working. So this basically forces the web page to reload every time, um, you know, there's activity on it. So that just keeps things working uh, consistently. And then we just go to OK. So what's cool about the browser source is that it automatically puts a... Um, a green screen filter on it. So the alert box, the old fashioned way is you'd have to have the alert box in a separate window and then do a window capture, then use the color key, just like we did on our chat to remove the green on the back. But this is really cool now. So we've got our alert box and I'm going to pull up my, my window so we can go back here. We can actually test the alert box. So let's go um, test follow. There we go. So we got an alert just like that. And I'll actually do it again, but I'll take this and move it off screen so you can't see it. Um, and there we go. And this is where your desktop audio also comes into play as well. So you'll notice that the desktop audio sound or volume levels um, go up just like that. So you can change uh, the alert sounds and things like that. Um, and you can configure what the alert box fires on. So for Twitch, I have a fire on everything. Um, for YouTube, I, I just started having it fire on donations only. Um, because YouTube, the subscribers are, are very fickle on YouTube. You get a lot of people subscribing when they don't really mean to. Um, or they, they subscribe and then they unsubscribe right away. Things like that. So it's like, you know, it, it's kind of like... I, I don't want to say like the subscription number on YouTube is not as important as the follower count is on Twitch. I think on Twitch, they're more likely to actually interact and things like that. Whereas on YouTube, people are subbing that aren't even watching the stream. I mean, someone might watch a Let's Play, subscribe to my channel, and the alert will fire while I'm streaming. Well, they're not going to see it. They're not in the stream. And, you know, people watching the stream probably don't care. Now, if there's someone in the stream 
that just followed because they're watching the stream and participating, then I do want to show that. But on YouTube, it's harder to gauge that. So on Twitch, though, uh, I always leave it on. So whenever a follow comes up, you know, on Twitch, they only find my channel from the live feed. That's it. So I know they're there. I know they're watching. Um, and they're more likely to stick around and stay around on Twitch than they are on YouTube. So, but we'll go ahead and just do another, you know, test follow just like that. So that's the alert box. And if I really wanted to say, you know, I could bring this up here, um, kind of like that. Probably more centered would be better. But, you know, this is where you can... Yeah, you can just kind of mess with things. I usually like overlaying it on the gameplay because that's where people's eyes are. Um, so especially when someone does like a big donation or something like that. Or, um, you know, bits. Bits are a really fun form of donating on Twitch. And uh, so speaking of bits, um, this is for people that are are working on Twitch as well. So what I'm going to do here is go to the jar. And you can basically, you know, custom select your jar. Uh, what I've actually liked and enjoyed very much is sort of the, the pachinko jar. Um, but basically what happens here is you have the jar. And we're going to go ahead and add a source in OBS. So we go to uh, browser source again. And we're going to go ahead and just paste in the link, just like so. And probably do 1280 by 720 again and 60 frames a second. Refresh browser when scene becomes active and click OK. And so now we have a cup on stream. So what happens is these are bits that are falling into the cup. So bits are a form of donations on Twitch. People can buy bits and then they can throw them at the streamer. And um, when bits happen, you'll see them trickle into the cup. Some will miss, some will go in, some will make the cup explode. Uh, so let's go ahead and do test bits. So let's go ahead and test those bits. But here are a thousand bits and it basically pops by with, you know, uh, a message and whatnot, and then it drops the bit into the cup, just like that. So that's the bit cup for Twitch. And you you add it just via a browser source, just like other things. You can overlay it on your gameplay like this, or what I usually do is I'll keep it out to the side or something like that. Um, you know, in this case, it's probably better for it to be down at the bottom. So, and we'll go ahead and do another one. And it'll scroll by just kind of like that. Now, you'll notice that the text actually gets in the way of the chat. So what I would actually probably do is um, I would crop this. So let's go ahead and test it again. Because it's already popping up on top of the gameplay as well. But then you'll see the bit just kind of fall. There it is. Um, and yeah, so bits are a really fun way of, of donating, um, on Twitch. So that's, that's the bit cup, but you also have things like a chat box. This is another form of chat integration. Uh, you have a donation ticker, which can track donations and things like that. Uh, you also have stream labels, which, um, basically, let's go to my, my Twitch, uh, my Twitch scene here. So. And let me take my webcam, which is all discombobulated now, and get that back into place like it's supposed to be, kind of like that. Okay, so you'll notice that I have uh, overlays here on the bottom. So uh, stream labels is a way of uh, tracking who's followed, who's subbed, who's given you bits, the bit cup. Uh, and who's donated and things like that. Uh, this actually reads from a text file on your computer. So you have to install Streamlabs manually and then call on those text files that log all your follows, all your subs and things like that. Um, and then you have to configure those. So that's a lot of work. I'm not gonna show you how to do that, but it is something that's nice. I like having people's names up on the stream as I guess, you know, kind of like incentive to to follow or, you know, subscribe to my, my Twitch channel, basically a paid sub or bits. Um, 
on Twitch, you also have this thing up here called the Bits Boss Battle. And that's a separate website, but it's really fun as well. So whenever someone tosses bits into your cup, it knocks the HP off um, the bar up here. So uh, Professor X, uh, you know, he was an old coworker and friend of mine. Uh, so he donated a bunch of bits a couple weeks ago. He knocked the previous person off by doing that. And when he does that, he gets his own HP bar, depending on the amount of bits he tosses in. Um, so if you knock the previous person off and you've only gone, you, you only did like, you know, anywhere up to 100 bits, uh, you'll start with 100 HP. Now, every 100 bits past that, you'll actually raise your 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 HP bar. So he did like a $15 donation or something like that, uh, which basically gave him, you know, 1500 HP. And so he's, um, or close to 1500 HP. Um, and he's been slowly been, been been getting chipped away by people that that toss bits into the cup. So every time a, a bit is tossed into the cup. You know, depending on the amount of bits that are thrown in, that'll that'll take the HP off of his name. And um, once he gets killed, effectively, he will he'll get knocked off, and the person that killed him will get will get up on the screen. Again, it's a fun way of um, you know uh, um, acknowledging folks that do you know donate to the stream and things like that. And I like that. Uh, I don't do it on YouTube because my YouTube streams, I try to. Um, I try to structure my YouTube streams in a way to where they can be viewed as like normal videos. So if someone stumbles upon the stream, they're not seeing a bunch of different boxes and names and things like that. Whereas on Twitch, it's more casual, you know, uh, and I do want to show, um, you know, thanks for the people that do donate to the channel. So I, I feature them in the stream and <laughs> Xavier here, he's going to be up there for a while. So, and if you happen to be watching X, thanks. Uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. So. Uh, but yeah, that's stream labels, and that is the Bits Boss Battle. Now, you notice here, I also have a couple of other things on my Twitch feed. So let's go back to the tutorial, and I'll just kind of show you what, what these do. And uh, so, yeah, we're using, like, the YouTube chat here just as an example, but a lot of what I'm starting to show you now is geared more towards Twitch and not so much YouTube. Um, you can do all these things on YouTube as well. You can do stream labels. You can uh, you can do donation uh, integrations and things like that uh, where names pop up on the screen when, you know, um, when they donate and things like that. Um, actually, pretty much everything I'm talking about minus the BitCup Um yeah, pretty much everything minus the bit cup can be done on YouTube as well. So if you're one of those guys, uh, you know, like Boston Burf or Solid Nate, they do a lot of streaming on YouTube specifically. They can use all these things too. So, um, but let's go and do, I want to show you the event list, which is nice as well. So you'll notice here, I've got it, you know, pre-configured basically. And this will, this is another way of sort of thanking people that have, you know, hosted your channel or done subscriptions or things like that. Um, if you're already doing stream labels though, I think it's important to, to configure this. So I have it configured to only show host, like who ha who's hosted my channel. So, and what we'll do is we'll do another browser source. So hosting on Twitch, for those of you guys that don't know, is a way of sending your audience to another stream. So say you're about to sign up. You're like, okay, I'm done streaming. Let's go, let's go host um, Aquas. He's a guy I watch a lot on Twitch. Um, so what it'll do, what that'll do is it'll take my viewers, everyone that's in chat, and send them over to Aquas' stream. Um, so it's 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 a nice way of um, you know trying to trying to get other streamers you like and follow, you know, more exposure and vice versa. You know, if someone hosts you, that's more exposure for your channel. Maybe you'll get a new follower. Maybe you'll get, you know, maybe you'll make some new friends, you know, meet some cool people with similar interests and whatnot. So here's our event list. So there we go. So I got a host last night from Crick and Vavulf and uh, a, quite a generous one from a call the other day. So that was nice. Um, so what I'm going to do is it's like, where do I put this? And and do I really want it this large on the stream? Well, for one, we have to crop it. Um, so do I want to just do like the top three? Do I want to just do the top one? Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just do the top one just like this. And I'll leave it, um, you know, somewhere, somewhere small. Um, one thing I can do is I can just leave it like this completely. And I can just layer it down, you know, below the chat or something like that. So let's go ahead and bring this over here. Okay. All 
So kind of like that. So I can have the event list there, which shows, you know, the hosts and things like that down there. And I can, I can move the bit cup, you know, elsewhere if I really want to. Layer it on top of this fancy face. No. So we can leave the bit cup up there. Or, you know, what I used to do and what I still sometimes do is I actually layer the bit cup um, on top of the gameplay itself, you know. So when it explodes, it just kind of, you know, it kind of adds to the gameplay. So um, it's fun. Um, and let's see what else I have here on Streamlabs. Oh, I have the uh, the viewer count, which is nice. This is uh, more of a recent one that's been implemented. So uh, this is really cool because it can tell you how many people are watching your stream. So again, we'll add another browser source. And again, I like, you know, I've got a strong system, so we're going to make sure everything is, you know, nice and 60 frames a second and, you know, high, high uh, visual quality and whatnot. Now, you'll notice that this does, doesn't really seem to work that well in this blue background. So sometimes what I do here is maybe I'll layer it on uh, the webcam up here. Sometimes I'll layer it just right on top of the gameplay like this um, so people can see, you know, the viewer count. But yeah, there are a whole bunch of different things you can do here. And my viewer count is not going to get that high. So we're just going to crop it like this. And let's just put it on the webcam right here. So, so there we go. So now you can see the viewer count as well. Um, this is good for people that are, you know, full screen. Or if I have the view count on my Twitch dashboard or YouTube dashboard uh, hidden, then uh, I can at least look at OBS and still see how many people are watching, uh, which is good. Now let's go ahead and see what else Streamlabs has here. I'm pretty sure that's probably about it. There's a couple other things that are kind of interesting. Spin wheel I haven't messed around with. There are a lot of different things that, that are kind of like gamey that can, you know, help people interact with your stream more. It can make it more uh, enjoyable for them as well. Streamlabs also has uh, different templates and things like that as well. Um, I don't like using pre-made templates. I like making my own templates, as you can probably tell. And um, so, yeah. And if I wanted to, you know, you know how the chat is just kind of, you know, from here, I think the chat would actually probably be kind of hard to read. So, you know, let's go ahead and go back to that chat, go to filters, and then let's just mute the color key. And so there we go. We've got, you know, just, uh, just the old gray background. Um, and the border is not matching naturally because we, we configured the border assuming there would be no background. So uh, let's move this like that. And there we go. So yeah, now we have gray background on the chat. It's not lined up perfectly with the webcam, so I, I would get really anal retentive and line everything up perfectly, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, I mean, heck, even if I really wanted to, um, what I could do is I could actually configure this background to where I make like the whole right side just like gray underneath or something like that. So um, sometimes what I'll do is... Let's actually get kind of fancy here. So this will just kind of show you some of the things you can do here. Uh, I'm gonna add just an existing, you know, gray background that I've already got. So there we go, kind of like that. And um, what I wanna do is actually, I wanna raise, I wanna make this bigger, even bigger, kind of like that. And then what I wanna do is transform it, uh, probably rotate it 180 degrees. Kind of like that. And so what I'm going to do is let's actually shrink it back a little bit. Unfortunately, this does OBS is not quite as flexible as say Photoshop is. So what I'm going to do is bring this here. Kind of like that, bring it down and then bring it back up. And then we're gonna we're gonna put this down below. So just bring it down below everything. And there we go. So we have you know we have some gray on the side. We've got our borders and whatnot. Um, and if I really wanted to, one thing I would do is add another image. I don't have a, an image custom made already for this, but what I'll do is. Uh, Actually, you know, I have I actually have a fun idea here. This is going to be really dumb, but this is how you can get creative with limitations. So I'm going to just do text GDI. 
uh, tutorial I. And what I'm going to do is just do um, a bar like that. Select font, and we're going to make it extremely large. And let's do impact. Just like that. So we've got a I. And here's our I. But you know what? I don't care about the I. I want, a, I want an easy border. And look at that, we've got ourselves an easy border. But what I also want to do is go to the properties. I want to change the font color. So pick screen color. And I want gray kind of like, kind of like my border right there. So you go to OK. And now we got ourselves a nice gray border. Um, so let's go ahead and actually bring that down as well. And there we go. So look at that. You, you see the gameplay is kind of like, you know, overlaid on top um, of the, the gray bar on the right. I actually kind of like this template. You know, the more I work on it, the more I'm like, hmm, maybe I should take this somewhere. Maybe I should maybe I should do something with this. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll use it as like a, a template to just sort of mix things up. Um, but yeah, that was all I did is I made an eye at 72 pixels and um, or 72 font size and then just stretched it with the the shift transform and uh, so I didn't have to go into Photoshop or anything so there, there are little shortcuts you can take um, you know to to configure a template like this so but yeah I mean this is and actually even if I wanted to I could take the viewer count now and I can since there's gray down here uh, it, you can see it a little bit better so now I've got the viewer count. It's, you know, that bar on the right is all fleshed out. And, um, you know, I could even do the same thing on the top if I wanted to have some text up here. Um, and if I wanted to fill out this area a little bit up top. You notice there's a lot of empty space here. So I could do a whole lot of other things with that. Uh, if I'm on Twitch, I'd probably have the bits boss bar up here as well. So let's just go ahead and, you know, integrate that. You know, we might as well. So. And I've already got existing ones, so bits boss battle, just like so. Um, but I did use a color key on it, so it actually doesn't look that good in this black background uh, or this blue background. You can actually see how it's, you know, the color key has been affected, so has affected it. So actually, we're going to go ahead and just remove it. Um, or if I wanted to, I could, I could just, uh, you know, bring it down here, you know, and... Um, basically bring it down like that and have it nice and small. I actually like having it pretty large though. I think it's, I think it's more fun to look at when it's large. So, but yeah. And I mean, something else I could do here, I could also get rid of like the borders now since there's just like, you know, there's already a gray background, but actually I like the borders. I think I would probably leave them or maybe remove the chat um, border and maybe have the chat you know, like kind of go under the webcam, if you will, and maybe even under the event list. That, there's just a whole lot of different things you can do with, with OBS. And so that's it, guys. I mean, I don't think there's really a whole lot else for me to talk about. I mean, oh, oh, actually, one more thing. This is actually really important. I should have covered it earlier. So uh, let's go ahead and add, let's go ahead and add a mic. Let, actually, let's, let's not add a mic, actually. So what we're going to do is, um, I don't need to add a mic, but there are a couple things I, I do want to show you. So, you know, if you have an audio device, uh, you can go to filters and you have audio and vid video filters. So this is, I should have talked about this earlier, audio and video filters and effect filters. So audio and video filters can be like compressors, gain controls, noise gates. Uh, I've talked about noise gates and noise suppression in one of my previous videos. Um, and you can even use VST plugins, uh, you know, so if you're more of a professional audio guy, you've probably got VST plugins and you can bring them into OBS, which is really great. Uh, you've also got video delay, which can be really important. So say like your, your audio is out of sync from your gameplay. I actually used to have that problem with my old Elgato where 
I would do something in game and the audio for the game wouldn't line up. So I had to actually use the video delay to where I pushed the video feed forward, uh, basically delayed it to line it up with the, the audio uh, you know, sync issue. So there's that. Uh, if I added a compressor, I can basically, you know, change the ratio and things like that. Um, the threshold, um, you know, basically make the sound sound a little, a little more thick. Uh, I don't add compressors or anything like that on my gameplay because especially a lot of modern games, they already do a lot of compression and whatnot. You don't need to, to compress that further, but you might want to do it if you're playing like an old NES game or something. And then you've also got effect filters, uh, and things like that. Um, you know, for because this is uh, my capture card we're working on. You can do video filters and audio filters, so you can add filters for the audio, but you can also add filters for the video as well. So if I want to do a color key, or you know, I can sharpen it a little bit, uh, things like that. I don't usually do that, but if one thing I do do sometimes though is do um, color correction, so I can change like the gamma, I can change the brightness and contrast and things like that. All right, let's move the PS4 controller. Yeah, there we go. Brightness is back. So yeah, I can adjust the brightness and contrast and things like that. Um, but I actually don't usually do it from this screen. Um, and actually, let's let's go ahead and remove that filter too. So let's go ahead and leave that out. What I usually do is because I have my Elgato, I go to Properties, and then I go to Configure Video. And this is Elgato software. So what OBS does is it, it does use your device's software. So it'll use the Logitech webcam software. It'll use your capture card software as long as it's in, installed. Um, but I use the capture card software to configure my, my capture card. So I've got the brightness and contrast and saturation changed. Uh, and actually, since we're, we're going in directly with HDMI from the PS4, I don't really need the saturation cranked up or the contrast up for PlayStation 4. It should have you know, great brightness and contrast by default. Now, when I go through the Frame Meister or the OSSC for retro consoles, then yeah, I always have the brightness or contrast up a little bit, saturation up a little bit, especially through the Frame Meister. Uh, but yeah, so you can just go and you can change the brightness and, and con contrast from your capture card software. So this is what I use when I do it. But if you want, you know, greater fine-tuned control over your video devices, um, Oh, that was weird. I just lost sync to my monitor. I've got it up on my screen up here, but that was weird. So, but yeah, if I wanted to, I could add the, uh, you know, the brightness in contrast and color correction or whatever in OBS itself. So you have a lot of, a lot of flexibility with OBS. Uh, but lastly, as far as audio is concerned, you do have the mixer down here. And if you click on one of these cogs, you can go to advanced audio properties. This is really, really important. So, um, something I like to do is I like to down mix everything to mono. And the reason I do that is you, you, you'd be surprised at how many people out there watch, um, and have broken headphones or they're only listening with like one cup or their cable is halfway out. And so basically what will happen is if I'm running things in stereo, they're going to, you know, a, a certain certain sound elements are going to be lost completely because say like they're not even look they're not even listening to the right cup, but some of the core audio is coming out of that right cup, um, and they're not hearing it. And then they go in chat, they say, "Oh, oh, my audio is not working right." Uh, hello, um, and they they look at you first. They say, "Oh, it's not me that's wrong. It's you, the streamer, have messed something up." And it's like. Um, well, actually, when I'm down mixing the mono, I can't mix, mess anything up. So, and that's why I down mix the mono. So, I I used to have a lot of people um, have issues with like stereo effects and things like that. Especially when I would play games and they would have stereo effects. You know, um, Saturn Doom is actually a really good example because for some reason, all the sound effects in the game come out of like the left side. It's really really weird. So, if someone is listening to that game and I'm, I'm playing it in stereo. Um, and something's wrong with their, their left cup, they're not going to hear any sound effects in the game. And they're going to look at me and, and think that like I'm doing something wrong. So down mixing the mono basically just takes, you know, both channels, smashes them into one. Uh, and you know, you don't have that issue anymore. So that's, that's pretty important, uh, to me personally speaking. Um, but there's also something really important here as well. And this is something that I, I, I wasn't doing earlier. Um, 
or I don't have configured apparently right now. I think it's just because I'm on a different scene. So I don't have my main mic right here, the Audio Technica. I don't have it listed here because of that. Um, but basically there's a sync offset command. So a lot of times what'll happen is I'll talk and my talking won't line up with my webcam up here in the top right. So to do that, you can actually, um, you know, put a delay or put an offset on the mic and then you can run some tests. What I like to do is I like to snap kind of like that. And then I just, I just raise the offset, you know, uh, you know, usually 150 milliseconds will, will do it. And I'm just, I'm doing it on the capture card here, but it's not, you, you want to do it on your microphone. Um, and then I snap again, you know, I'd basically be doing a live stream and watching the stream back and monitoring it with my headphones. So that is something you do have to do as a streamer. If you want to get everything synced up, you have to do that. Um, it's, it's a lot of work to get everything lined up just perfect to have a nice, clean, seamless stream. But, uh, but yeah, that was the last thing I really wanted to talk about. Um, and I can't really think of a whole lot else to talk about. There are a lot of other things I could show you, but they're not really necessary to be honest with you. Um, if you want to get your hands dirty with OBS or live streaming, absolutely, you know, dig in, um, you know, have fun, poke around, it, it, you know, anyone can do this. It's a free application. You can download it. You don't even have to stream. You can just try to set up a template if you want, if you want to get your hands dirty. Um, what that'll probably get you wanting to try to stream. So, uh, but that's going to do it guys. Um, if you guys had any questions or comments or anything like that, as always post a comment down below. Uh, I might do a fifth part here where I talk about Sony Vegas pro. Um, I think there are a couple people out there that want another tutorial on that. So I might do that. Um, and that should probably wrap up this series on how I make my videos. Again, if you miss the other parts, the first part, I did a thumbnail tutorial with Photoshop. The next one, I showed you how I record my audio and whatnot, uh, and how I actually edit a Let's Play. Um, and then part three is actually showing you my, my room here, which unfortunately you can't really see, but I have consoles and all that stuff set up over here. So, um, but I also have my webcam on a swivel monitor. Uh, stand. So, um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was useful. I know this was really, really long winded, but, um, you know, this should get you going in the right direction. If you want to try to stream, um, with OBS or do local recordings or, or, or things like that. And again, if you have any questions or comments, you want to know something else, uh, or you want some other tips or things like that, um, post them down below or hop onto a live stream when I'm streaming, feel free to ask me questions there or just reach out to me on, you know, various social media platforms. Twitter is a really good one in particular. So, uh, follow me on Twitter there. If, uh, if you want to, you know, chat back and forth uh, about, about things like this. So, but yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Um, uh, I guess that's it. So until the next one, take it easy.